CJ, I guess it was worth marching with um un unmitigated racists and almost you could have gotten killed yeah. in Charlottesville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marching amongst them. Yeah, I appreciate the amongst word. <laughs> Some of <laughs> yeah. the viewers are like, he was marching with white supremacists? Amongst. But that's what happened. That's what happened. You started a little documentary in New Orleans, 2015. Why y'all taking down the statue? And then Trump happened, and then Charlottesville happened, and George Floyd happened. He's still out there with the camera. I'm like, hey, man, you got to stop. You got to edit. <laughs> you got to wrap edit. this up. You got to edit some of this shit, man, and put something out. Man. It just, they won't stop, Roy. They keep having meetings. <laughs> yeah, white supremacy. Go back out there. White supremacy is like a Marvel franchise, yeah, right? They're like, is. ooh, what else can we put out into the extended universe? What about an attack on the Capitol? <laughs> what about what history about books? Nick Fuentes? Yeah. Yeah, him and Which Kanye running around years with old Trump. in a basement. Lives in a basement. He's yeah. 24 years old. He's Mexican American, and he has the nerve to do all this stuff. Yeah, so you're is. right. White supremacy is like a Marvel franchise, and they it keep going and going and going. And I don't think it will ever stop. And so, but let's get back to the doc because it it did start as Roy said. It started with taking down the statues. Now you should know I'm a very New Orleans person. Oh, wonderful. I go all the time, about six times a year. That's I am New Orleans. That's healthy. That's a healthy amount of trips. I mean, Roy, you got your spots. Roy, you are single. Go to New Orleans and mingle. Absolutely not. <laughs> Why? I'll never leave. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because I'm trying to get a place down there. But anyway, New Orleans, I love it. So when you're, you're the film, I know that square. I know Lee Square because yeah. I would do that walk into the Garden District. So what was your first reaction when you went to New Orleans and saw that the highest place of honor <laughs> is to a traitor who fought to keep us in chains. What it was your reaction? It makes sense. Because I grew up in the all-black community, so I know black history. Mm. <laughs> so I didn't go to schools where it was a truncated kind of like, oh, and then the people came over on a boat, and they worked, and they weren't paid very much. I went to a school where every day was black history, and they told it like a T.I. was. So mm -hmm. I knew about that, and I it was something that I expected. And there was something almost kind of like, eh, it is what it is. And, and to a certain degree, guys, and I would love your opinion on this, because you know, of course, there were people who felt like, well, why are they fighting over the damn statue? We have real things that we should be worried about. But I believe that symbolism and representation counts, right? So that's why it was important for them to get taken down. Absolutely. All of our, all of our conversations about the things that need to happen, education, reparations, criminal justice reform, all of those depend on an acknowledgement that racism exists. So when we're talking about a monument, it's helpful because it's concrete. Yeah. You're like, hey, can we can we at least agree to a base level that white supremacists who attack the government and fight to keep black people in chains, maybe that's not the best example of a New Orleanian? Can we agree on that? Yeah. And people were like, no, we can't even agree on that. That was he wasn't racist. The Civil War wasn't racist. So hearing that being said out loud in mixed company at at a city gathering. Yeah made us be like, we should be rolling camera on this mm -hmm. to see how hard some of these white folks are going to fight to hold on to literal stone and bronze. We didn't realize that it was going to get real scary. Too. Yeah. 